so we are here with a newly crowned 10k open water world champion, Carrie Ann Payne. Um, that's quite a nice ring to it, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, very good. It's a, I think actually I get to call myself the double world champion now. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Even, even better. <laughs> We're used to seeing you uh, like battling through the water, uh, surrounded by arms, legs. Yeah. I bet this is a, quite a welcome break to get away from that just for a moment. Yeah, no, it's it's nice to kind of just get away and do things like this. I do love swimming and I love the sport, but it's also good to get away from it every now and then, um, especially after such a major competition at the World Championships. Um, it's really important that you have time to rest, not just you know your body, but your mind as well. You need to recuperate that and get back into things after after having such a big major meet because we've trained all year round for this competition. Everything's riding on this competition, especially for myself. It's for me, it's potentially more important than anything I've ever done because it wasn't just you know another race. It was Olympic qualifiers, and this was it for me. Or you know, I was either going to make it or I wasn't going to make it. So um, yeah, I think my mind just needs a little bit of time to relax and, uh, and get over things. Just enjoy some time off, spend some time with the family, and then get back in and get ready for next season. Well that's it, and then we'll go on to the successes. But first, I've, I've got to ask, why open water swimming? <laughs> like, it, what's, is, there a, is there a law to it, or is it just because you're, you're just the best, so you go, I might as well just do it because I'm good at it? I really wish I could say I absolutely love it and it's amazing, but it is, it's a bit of both. I do really enjoy it. Um, it's very similar to kind of what I'm doing as a, as a pool swimmer anyway, the long distance stuff. But there is definitely an element of I'm quite good at it, so kind of someone's got to do it, I guess, so it might as well be me. But I think um, you've definitely got to be a certain type of person to do them. I mean, you're going to be swimming through dead animals, jellyfish, you know, shark scares, all that kind of stuff, getting punched, you know, all that kind of swimming in dirty rivers. I've swam in some horrendous places before. And um, yeah, it's certainly not pretty, but I think half of, you know, half of the sport, half of the battle is actually getting in and starting in the first place, never mind you know, swimming for two hours and then getting out of it at the end. It's a case of actually getting in, knowing you're probably swimming in some really dirty water. But um, yeah, I think you just, you know, I've, I've definitely got that kind of mindset. I don't know where I got that from. I assume it's from, you know, my upbringing and my parents and, you know, having an older brother and sister kind of got the bad end of it. <laughs> Not the bad end of everything, but like, uh, you know, obviously my sister would play jokes on me and my brother would play jokes on me and all that kind of stuff. So I think you just kind of get, I got resilient from my childhood and my brother and sister playing tricks on me and things. And now I'm just like, yeah, whatever, I'm going with it. You have qualified for the Olympics. You are the first British athlete out of all the sports <laughs> to, to qualify for the Olympics. I mean, that's a fantastic feat. You must, you must be overjoyed with that, obviously. Oh, absolutely. It, it's such an honour to be not only on, on a British, you know, the Olympic team, in competing for my home country is just going to be absolutely amazing but the honor of being the first one you know the first one of about 550 which is just such an amazing feeling that um, you know it kind of feels so much more real now people can say oh well yeah we have an Olympian somebody is there rather than you know everybody's been thinking oh the Olympics are coming they're coming oh the Olympics this the Olympics that's actually well yeah it's actually real now there is somebody gonna be there so we have to have venues ready which they you know, done an absolutely amazing job getting all the venues ready and, and just organising everything so far. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the ball's just going to keep rolling and more people are going to join the team and, um, yeah, I can't wait to sort of meet everybody, I guess, that's going to be part of that. And uh, since since winning your gold, which seems to be clasping yes. tightly there, um, I mean, th looking forward, do you go, right, I've qualified for the Olympics, that's it, feet up, cup of tea, or is this where like, <laughs> the real work begins? I wish, um, no, unfortunately it's not something that we just, you know, we, we stop about a year in advance thinking, oh, it's the Olympics next year, probably should get in and swim. It is literally something I've been doing all of my life. I've been training since I was 12 years old, I'm 23 now. It's 11 years by the time next year, it'll be 20, uh, 12 years of my life that I've dedicated to swimming, um, you know, in hope that one day I would, I would represent my country. And I very, you know, again, very proudly did that in Beijing in 2008. And, and I really am so, so happy that I can say that I'm a double Olympian, double world champion. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that nobody can ever take away from me. Fantastic. And obviously, um, you will be swimming in the Serpentine. Um, probably one of the nicer places you've ever swam. Yeah, swimming. definitely. Yeah, I've uh, swam in there before. It's such a nice, it's such a, you know, a beautiful like, icon. Um, you know, in Hyde Park, in the centre of London, it's just going to be absolutely amazing, and I really can't wait to race there. I suppose the only thing that I'm going to need to dodge is maybe one or two swans, but other than that, I don't think there should be any uh, nasty things in there. Maybe a chopping trolley or two, but I don't think so. Well, I mean, as, as you said before, you've, you've faced jellyfish in Melbourne, uh, dead animals in China. It sounds, sounds like an Indiana Jones movie more than an elite <laughs> yeah. swimmer. I mean, is, like, is that quite difficult to get around? Um, 
Yes and no. I mean, yeah, it's brilliant that I can come away and say, "As mum, you know, threw jellyfish for two hours," and you know, I can, I can pretend to exaggerate how big they were, but they literally were the size of dinner plates. I'm not kidding you. And um, it's such an amazing story to tell people, and you know, to go to China, and that's probably the worst place I've ever. Not the worst place. I mean, it was the dirtiest river I've ever swam in. Um, in terms of water quality, but you know, it's safe. They're never going to put us in a situation where we're going to get really ill. Uh, so yeah, to you know, it's 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 brilliant to come home and to tell my mom, you know, all these stories of stuff I've done and places I've been, and tell you know people this is what I've done. Um, but I just have to get used to it. It's just part and parcel of the sport. Because like I said, if I didn't do it, somebody else easily would step into my shoes and do it. So uh, you just got to take the rough and the smooth. And um, you know, for every good swim, you're going to have a bad swim as well. So Kind of out. Well, that's exactly it. And um, as most people uh, may know, you you are an avid Twitterer. I am. Um, <laughs> Some would say borderline obsessive Twitterer. Um, <laughs> and anyone and anyone who follows you would know that you have recently become an auntie as well. Yes. So congratulations for that. Thank I mean, was that was that sort of like the icing on the cake after you when you were old? I must admit, all I've thought about until today. Um, has been my niece because I'm very much a family girl and I would give up absolutely everything that I've done, every medal I've won, you know, to make sure that my family was safe and that they were happy. So all I was thinking about, you know, sort of a couple of days before the race, because I knew my sister was due like any day now. And then on the day of the race, when I found out, I found out I literally five minutes after finishing that she was in labor. Um, you know, it was just such an amazing feeling knowing that, you know, I must have hoped, I'd really hoped that the baby was going to be born that day after, you know, winning the world title and knowing that I'd qualified for the Olympics. Um, but I must admit, like I said, I haven't really thought of anything else other than that. I haven't let it sink in, it's not sunk in yet. I'm still just kind of walking on cloud nine until I saw her and I finally saw her today. I got to see her and hold her for like four hours non-stop, um, which was brilliant. Uh, so I think maybe tomorrow when I wake up and, you know, I'm back in Britain obviously and, um, you know, things might sink in the next couple of days, but um, like I said, I've, all I've been thinking about is, uh, is seeing my niece. Fantastic. And uh, we also know that you shared a room with Rebecca Adlinson as well. I did. Um, was that perhaps the most successful room <laughs> in the history of anything? Um, <laughs> potentially, I don't know. I'm sure there's been more successful roomies before, but um, yeah, it's always brilliant. Me, me and Becky get on so well and we're both so similar in terms of, you know, we both like having messy rooms and everybody that came into our room was like, how do you girls live in here? But we were like, that's oh, fine. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me that she's messy and it doesn't bother her that I'm messy. So we kind of just like all join it together, which is good. And, you know, we both do Sudoku's and things like that. And when we watch TV, we're both, you know, so zoned in. Like if somebody talks to me, you can literally talk to me for five minutes and I'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have a clue what you said if the TV's on because I'm so focused on the TV and like watching what it is. And I get annoyed sometimes when people do talk to me and I'm trying to watch a film and I'm like being polite, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I really want to watch this film. <laughs> um, but Becky's exactly the same. So, you know, we'll start a conversation then a film will start and then it'll just sort of trail off and then we'll just be like, to film and we have to watch it till the end as well which is good so yeah we kind of get on really well and, uh, and you know it's just nice sharing a room with someone that kind of understands me so well and it was good because Becky's obviously been there and she's a very professional athlete and I was kind of conscious that coming into the pool team after um, I did the open water I'd obviously won a medal and I didn't want it to impact too much because everybody else hadn't swum yet um, but Becky kindly said that it was you know it was a push and the boost that gave the team that extra you know edge on the first couple of days they you know they really needed that excitement which which they got from watching my swim which was brilliant. And a, f a few weeks ago on, on the Sports Vibe she said to us that um, she thinks she has mild OCD and that she has to set an alarm clock uh, so she wakes up on, uh, on an even number. Is, it, is this true? Yeah, I just leave her to it. She just does what she wants and uh, the funniest part actually was uh, obviously you get a key when you go into a hotel room and they use just little cards and I got a key as well and once she gets her key that is her key and you know even if her key's in the machine, the power machine and mine's on the side and she needs to leave before me and I'm watching the TV, she'll take it out and it'll stop the TV just so she can get her ticket, her, her little thing, her key and then I put mine back in. So yeah, it's sometimes quite funny. I just be like, fine Becky, because I know that it's going to annoy her if she doesn't have her key. But I mean, it's all, it's all a bit of fun. And yeah, she does have a semi-OCD, but it's definitely not anything to do with tidiness. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully uh, she'll be joining you in the Olympics. Um, it'll be a busy year all around um, because you'll be getting married. I will, yes. Uh, very excitingly. Yeah, I can't wait actually for that. So no matter what happens next year, it's going to be a brilliant year. I'm very excited for it. 
So yeah, kind of at the moment, in the next couple of months going to be really busy organising the wedding, so it's all organised before the Olympics, so I don't want to obviously be running around doing that, but it's a kind of the perfect distraction for me as well. I do like having something outside and being busy and occupied before a major competition. Um, so I mean, currently before Worlds, I was organising a ball for my swimming club, Stockport Metro, so um, yeah, I like having little things and you know keeping myself occupied and things like that. So in a little over a year, we'll all be saying Carrie Ann Payne, world champion, Olympic champion, and a newlywed. <laughs> um, definitely two of them. Yes, I'm not sure about the third one yet. We'll have to wait and see.